Hello, Aldo Figueroa here. In this video, we are going to continue with our demonstration. Uh, here I have my polygon hammer that we created previously, and I have a couple of textures on it. Uh, just uh, nothing too fancy, just a name right here. And what I've done on this hammer, uh, I have, let me open up my hyper shade. I have this Arnold standard surface shader that I have applied an image to, uh, which is our texture. And I also have this anisotrophic shader as well. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna set up my scene using Arnold, uh, an, Ar an Arnold light. So what I want to do is within my scene here, I'm gonna go ahead and if you notice in the file menu all the way on the far right, we have this Arnold menu. Now, it doesn't, man, doesn't matter what menu set you're in, you always have that Arnold, as long as you have Arnold installed on your computer. Arnold, and notice that it has its own lights. We are going to create a physical sky. What this is going to do, it's going to do two things. It's going to create a sky dome. Then it's going to attach uh, a physical sky to uh, the sky dome. So it kind of does two things in one. So let's go ahead and select it, physical sky. And notice that everything goes dark. In the background, you have your sky dome, but if you notice for the color right here, uh, now before we actually switch to it, for your sky dome, it too has different types of uh, settings right here. You can change the intensity, uh, the exposure, the shadow color. You have all these these different settings, but because we attached a color, uh, the physical sky to the color attribute, if I click right here, or it's also up here at the tab, if we click on it, we have our settings. Now, to be able to really see what our settings look like, we have to set up uh, we have to set up our render settings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this little icon right here that opens up my render settings. And what I'm going to suggest on the, on the, under the common tab first, let's go straight to the bottom for my preset. I'm going to set something that's uh, going to be relatively decent. I'm going to select HD 720. Now, I don't want to go too large because it's going to take a long time to actually render out an image the larger the resolution is. So uh, render using, I want to make sure that we have Arnold Renderer. Now Arnold is a ray trace renderer, which is uh, really high quality. But as a result, because we're using this high quality renderer, it also makes use of more resources. So this is where having either um, a multiprocessor CPU that, that, uh, that has a high, a clock speed or having uh, a powerful uh, GPU graphics processor uh, unit uh, comes into play. Uh, under system, I want to point out render device. Right now, I'm going to start off with CPU. I'm going to show you how you could potentially change it if you your computer has the ability to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to I want to close this window because we're going to have to come back to it in a, in a moment. Right here, I have my perspective window. This time, I'm not going to use this, the render view. We could use it, but instead, I'm going to go into Arnold, and I'm going to open up the open Arnold renderer. It's going to create a, a file. I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. Uh, it's going to open up a window. And... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on this little play on the top right hand corner. Let's see, it's initializing the renderer, so you might need to give it a moment. Okay, there it is. And one of the, of the cool things about this, let's say I might need to resize my render window simply because the resolution, uh, it's a little bit high for my screen that I have right here. But one of the things that I want to point out is as I rotate my perspective window, notice that my render view is updating as well. So we haven't changed any of the settings. So you can see how using this physical sky, it's creating like a sky. 
So one of the things that I want to do right now, we, our hammer is just in a void. So I'm going to go, I want to create a floor plane. And instead of creating a plane, I'm actually going to create a polygon disk. Under create, I'm going to go to polygon primitives. And there is a disk. I, I don't need to go to the options. I'm just going to create the disk. And now notice, uh, I'm going to go ahead and scale it, but I'm going to really scale it really large. You can see that by scaling it, now we get this little platform. But instead, instead of having just like this small platform, I want it to extend all the way off into the horizon. So I'm going to switch to my channel box. And with the disk selected, I'm going to change this to, wait for it, 10,000. It makes it really large and sends it off into the distance. And now we're able to see uh, what this looks like. If I, as I rotate around, you can see it's updating my view. Now, right here, what's happened is that my camera is beneath the floor plane. So I do wanna watch out for this. But this is giving you the ability to be able to view your your uh, your render render view. So what I want to do, I'm going to click on the background, which selects my sky dome. But I'm going to go back into the attribute editor, and I want to I'm going to focus on this window right here. I'm going to go back to the physical light. This time I'm going to click on this little button right here just to show you the other way. And I want to show you some of the settings that we have right here. So I'm going to just move, rotate my window just a bit right here, just so we could see it. I'm going to zoom out as well. One thing that I should mention is that within this window, on the bottom left-hand corner, it gives you a timer of how long it's taking to render this one scene. And a couple of things that I want to point out. If you look at the scene right here, I didn't place a uh, specific shader. I'm just using the default Lambert. Uh, and let me go ahead and change some of the settings. You're going to see with changing some of these settings, what the sky dome is, it's trying to recreate the idea of the, like, of the sun, of the sky. And so we have our different settings right here. So we have the elevation and then the azimuth. So both of these work with helping you place the location of the sun. So if I drop the elevation down to say like near zero, this is kind of like sunset or sunrise. Now, if I place it all the way at elevation at 90, this is like high noon directly overhead. I'm going to go ahead and change this to about uh, we'll see right here, near 60. Now, what the azimuth is changing the placement. So as I move this around, uh, looking at the shadow as a reference, it's rotating around. Now, one of the things that you might notice is that if you look closely, the it has a little bit of graininess, graininess, graininess. I'm gonna have to say it three times to get it right. Uh, I'm gonna go into the render settings. Under the system, under Arnold Renderer, there are different ways that you could try to increase this. Uh, there's different settings and all of these different things are different like kind of multipliers. Your camera AA uh, is your main multiplier right now set to three. So there's lots of different variables in that, for example, for your, you can see right here, the camera samples right now is set to nine. Those are how many samples you have. As you increase this, let's say for example, if I change this from three to four, You can see how now it increased to 16 samples. And in doing so, it's also increasing 
how many how long it's going to take to render out this one this one image so there's lots of different settings i'm going to go ahead and return this to three uh, but one way of trying to increase the quality is by en enabling the adaptive sampling so you can see that total uh, you can see that now it's getting it's really increasing the quality, increasing the potential of how many rays that it's going to have. Uh, and I'm just going to let this render out. It, uh, depending on how many processors you have, uh, if it's hyperthread, the processor speed, uh, how what the capability of a computer, it might take longer or slower. So I'm just going to let this uh, finish. But you can see that it really increased the quality, but maybe it's a little bit too much. And so it's about two thirds of the way there. I just moved it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and drop this. It's already taking too long. Instead of having this at, 10, at 20, I'm going to drop this down to 10. So now it's reducing how many rays are going to be in here. When I say rays, it's ray tracing. How this basically how many lights. So this dropped it down. It's actually going a little bit faster. And I'm just waiting for this to reach 100. This took 23 seconds, but you can see that it's a lot clearer right here. So there are other ways of being able to change this by actually changing these different settings so that you don't have to turn this on. But this is the, the, the fast way to change the settings, but it's not the fast way to render. Another option is I'm going to go ahead and turn off. I'm going to turn off the enable. And you can see right here, it's, this only took two seconds. It's still grainy. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you could turn on GPU and you can see it renders out. This rendered out one second, but notice how grainy this is all, over, all the way around. So, and notice that you don't have control over these different uh, settings for diffuse specular transmission, SSS uh, and volume, but you do have adaptive. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and you can see by turning this on, uh, I have uh, a nice GPU and it was able to take four seconds to render out this scene. And so these are some different trade-offs that you're able to do, only if your computer is capable of doing so. So I do want to mention that. I'm going to leave this on for right now because on my computer, it's uh, rendering out pretty, pretty fast, pretty decent. And now what I could do, I could move around I could look at my scene. I could zoom in if I want to focus on the hammerhead, on the text. Oh, what's happening here? I, I'm, I'm, I think I've selected some faces that Let's zoom in and reconnect these. Let's go into my hyper shader, assign material to selection. Let's close this. Should be orange now. Oh, I miss some. There you go, those two. So I'm just reconnecting them. Okay, there you go. So right now we're not going into a deep dive into all the different settings for Arnold, but just enough to get us some really decent quality. So here, what we've created, we created this uh, uh, Arnold light. Uh, we use the physical light. We are able to then create a, a polygon disc to put this on the floor 
And now what you're able to do is let's go ahead and change more of these settings. I'm going to close this window. I'm going to go back in here. I could change the intensity. I can make this a little bit brighter. I can make it darker, but actually I want to make it a little bit brighter. So I'm going to just increase the intensity just a bit. You see, it takes four seconds to render this one out. So I could change the, the sky and the sun tint, the sun, sun size. Uh, we can have lots of fun with this. I'm gonna maybe change the azimuth. So this is also something that could be animated over time, but let's see, maybe I want this to the side. And maybe the elevation, I want it to be a little bit lower. There you go. So in the next video, what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how we could create uh, a turnaround camera so that we could have a camera that goes around our hammer and then um, setting up our render settings uh, to render this out. All right, I'll see you in that next video.